This afternoon and next Thursday afternoon, we're presenting The Prisoner of Zender and Rupert of Hentzau, Anthony Hope's two great stories of love and intrigue in Ruritania. The Prisoner of Zender by Anthony Hope. Adapted for radio by Eric Mashwitz and Kay Patrick. With Julian Glover as Rudolf Rassendil, Anna Gordon as Princess Flavia, Nigel Stock as Colonel Sapt, Martin Jarvis as Rupert of Hensal, and David Timpson as Fritz. The Prisoner of Zender. My name is Rudolf Rassendil. My family is an old one. The title held by my brother, Lord Burleston, dates from the 17th century. One hundred years ago, my great-great-grandmother, wife of the fifth Earl of Burleston, became involved in a love affair with a son of the royal house of Ruritania, who was on a private visit to London. The family name of the Ruritanian royal house is Elfberg. The particular Elfberg, who proved so attractive to my ancestor, left an embarrassing memento of his visit in the shape of a son, who inherited from his father the red hair and pale colouring of the Elfbergs. As far as I know, no Rassendil before myself had ever visited Ruritania or its capital, Strelsau. But while you listen to the strange story I have to tell, do not forget that once, years ago, an Elfberg and a Rassendil met and that it is to that meeting I owe my own red hair. Where am I to begin my story? Shall it be in a restaurant in Paris, which I visited with my brother, the Earl, and his wife? You may laugh, Rudolph, but really you're a great worry to me. My dearest sister-in-law, this concern is touching. You're a confirmed idler. Can nothing persuade you to do something? Why this passion to spur me on to action? I'm perfectly happy. In Paris, plenty of money, plenty of time, and an enviable social position as brother of Lord Burliston and brother-in-law to that most charming lady, his countess. Mm. Behold, it is enough. What do you say to your brother's idleness, Bob? You're damn lucky, Rudolph. <laughs> If you had the title to support and the estates to look after... Uh, Robert, you're talking nonsense. Even if you hadn't the title, you'd work at something, whereas Rudolph is a... Is a loafer. (laughs) The truth is, my dear Rose, that you can't forgive me my red hair. Whatever has that to do with it? (laughs) Everything. Here am I, a perpetual reminder that one Rassendil by marriage some time ago was, well, not quite all she might have been. Nonsense. It's true, Rose. Hello, why the change of tune? Some regimental march, I suppose. A suitable commentary on our conversation, if you'd like to know. The tune they're playing is the National Hymn of Ruritania. But why play it here? Ruritania's rather in the news at present. They're crowning their new king in a few days, Rudolph V. Hello, my name. Precisely. He's not very popular in his own country, hardly known there, in fact. Having spent the greater part of his life in Venice and Monte Carlo with various uh, ladies, he's a dissolute, idle young scoundrel. Quite like me, Rose, eh? Mm. <laughs> the popular candidate for the crown is... By uh... Jove, I believe there is some special reason for the music. Who's that fellow over there in the military kit with the handsome woman? It's the Duke Michael. That's the fellow I was going to tell you about. He's the son of the old king by a morganatic marriage. That doesn't count, of course, in the succession. Rudolph gets the throne, though Michael is far the more popular. I wonder who the woman is. They seem to be talking very seriously to each other. What's her name, Robert? Madame de Maubon. Deuced attractive woman. Runs a fashionable dress shop and uh, trimmings. What do you mean, and trimmings? What I mean, my dear, is that Antoinette de Maubon is a lady who loves well and often. And that she's been for several seasons the uh, belle amie of Duke Michael... Michael, must you really go back to Ruritania so soon? Tomorrow. I can't stay. You 
you can follow me in a few days. But why must you go? A courier came this afternoon. The coronation is to be two days earlier than was arranged. Oh. My brother Rudolph is afraid that if he does not make haste, he may never be crowned at all. Why should he not be crowned? You are too curious, my dear. Oh, Michael, be careful, I beg you. <laughs> Nothing, I promise, shall happen to me. You mean that to him? If a worcester will... comes home to be king, taking precedence over those who have cared for Ruritania... Michael, you <laughs> hurt my arm. There, now. I refuse to be drawn. These things are better not spoken of. Tonight, you must make me laugh, Antoinette. I am leaving for Ruritania tomorrow. We may not meet again for a little while. Well, you must admit, it hardly seems fair. It appears to me that those who work hard always lose, whereas those who play hard... Enough, Rose. You've convinced me. I have? Yes. I'm actually going to do something for once. Aren't you pleased? I'm delighted, if it's true. I leave Paris tomorrow. But why? To see the world. Let's put it like that. And where are you going? Call it Germany. I shall leave for Dresden tomorrow afternoon. Are you serious? Entirely. I must go out into the wide open spaces, Rose. I feel the call to action. I... Rose, my dear sister-in-law, don't look so desperately incredulous. Please, sir. Hmm? Uh, oh, yes. Sorry. Here. For Dresden. We reach Dresden in a half hour, sir. Is my ticket for Dresden? How careless of the agency. I intend to go through to Zender. Ach, we is bad that Auslander. Uh, this is the second, believe me. A lady in the next carriage, too. Already I've written for her a ticket to Ruritania. A lady? Francis in uh, French. Aha, Madame de Mougon. Uh, me, too. I was merely remarking that the coincidence was an odd one. Dinah, bitte. What name, please? Rassendil. 36 marks, please. Zender! Madame, Zender is the first town in Mauritania. We shall have to go through the customs. Let me help you with your luggage. You are very kind. You are getting out here? No, I'm going through to Strelzow, to the capital, monsieur. Monsieur is travelling, perhaps, to see the coronation. I am stopping tonight at the Golden Zendo. Lion here. I understand that the castle Zendo. of Zendo is very interesting, a fine old building in the medieval style. You know it, perhaps? I am a stranger in Ruritania. It belongs, I believe, to the Duke Michael. Really? Excuse me, madam. Uh, sir, anything to declare? Nothing, monsieur. Gold coins, tobacco, jewelry, lace. No. And a gentleman? Why, God forgive us. Well, get on with it, my old friend. Don't stand staring at me as if you'd seen a ghost. A ghost? No. Why are you staring at me? Staring, my hair. I ask pardon. Anything to declare, sir? <laughs> Capital, capital. Your fellows play well, my dear. Yes, Herr Rassendil. Sometimes Duke Michael himself comes to the Golden Lion just to listen to them. Aye, God bless him. He should be where his brother is to sit. Mother, you should not say that. Why not? We know Duke Michael. He's always lived among us. But the king has been so much abroad that not one in ten knows him by sight. The king, sir, is now at the Duke's hunting lodge in the forest here. From here he goes to Strelso to be crowned on Wednesday morning. Aye, and I wish he would stay at his hunting. That and wine and one thing more are all he loves, they say. Hush, mother. For my part, I hate Black Michael. A red Elfberg for me. They say the king's hair is as red as a fox. As red as... <laughs> Go on, say it. Don't be afraid of hurting my feelings. As red as the Englishman who has come to see him crowned. Eh? <laughs> But how comes the king here? The duke invited him, sir. 
to rest till Wednesday. Uh, then they're friends. Aye, they love one another as men do who want the same place and the same wife. What? The same wife too? All the world knows that Black Michael would give his soul to marry his cousin, the Princess Flavia. The politicians decree, though, that she shall marry the new king and reign in Ruritania. For my part, I should be sorry for her royal highness if she were to be tied to Black Michael, for he Who talks a... about Black Michael in the Duke's own town? Oh, you frighten me. <laughs> well, come, promise you will not tell on me, Johan. We have company, Johan. Good evening, sir. I had not expected to... Great God. Why are you staring at the gentleman, Johan? Tell me, sir, do you know our new king? No, I never saw him. I hope to do so on Wednesday. Why do you ask that? It was, uh, nothing. Nothing. Tell me, do you think that if I were to walk tomorrow through the forest, I should see this king of yours at his hunting lodge? It might happen. Later, of course, I mean to go on to Strelza. If you walk by the lodge, you will hit the railway again at Hofbau. We can send your luggage by the train to be left at your hotel at Strelza. Excellent. Have me wakened early. Good night, ladies. Uh, may your dreams, Mr. Johan, be free of ghosts. Ghosts with red hair. Good night, Good night sir. sir. Next morning, following the advice of Rosa, I set out on my walk through the forest. That was the first time I had seen Duke Michael's castle, with its old medieval keep separated from the main part of the castle by a deep moat, which could only be crossed by a drawbridge. I continued towards the hunting lodge where the king was staying. The day was hot, the walk tiring, and at noon I sat down to rest against a fallen tree. I must have fallen asleep almost at once and slept for some time too, for the sun was already low in the sky when... Oh, good shot! Good shot, sir! Not too bad. Uh, where did she fall? Hard by that block. Uh, beyond that, I swear. What? Who the deuce is this? Let heaven, Colonel, look. Why the devil said it? Shave him and he'd be the king. What on earth? And he's the height, too. Uh, you must pardon me, gentlemen, but I have been uh, asleep. May I ask your name, sir? As you have taken the first step in the acquaintance, perhaps, perhaps you would give me the lead in the matter of names. That's fair. This, sir, is Colonel Sapp. Sir. I am called Fritz von Tallenheim. Sir. We are both in the service of the King of Ruritania. Sir. And I am Rudolf Rassendil, a traveller from England. Rassendil. Rassendil. The name... By heaven, you're one of the Burlistons. My brother is Lord Burliston. Thy head betrayeth thee. The red hair of the Elfbergs. Why, Fritz, you know the story. Why, yes, I have heard. Fritz! It's the king. Watch his face, then, when he meets our traveller from England. That Fritz, where the deuce? Colonel, Fritz, who is this gentleman? Your majesty means... Am I dreaming? Or is this wood of Michael's full of mirrors? The hair, sire. The face? Damn it all, this is nonsense. He's English, sire. A Rassendil, brother to Lord Burlesden. He was asleep here when Fritz and I ran across him. The likeness is amazing. He's either an Elfberg or the devil. That my ancestor left his mark on England is very evident. Well met, cousin. <laughs> you must forgive me if I was taken aback. A man does not often meet his double. Where are you travelling to? Uh, to Strelsau, sire. To the coronation. Fritz! Fits a thousand crowns for a sight of Brother Michael's face when he sees a pair of us. <laughs> Seriously, I question Mr. Rassendil's wisdom in visiting Strelsau just now. You mean that there may be trouble enough without two kings in Strelsau? He must not go. I'll leave Ruritania tonight, sire. No, by thunder, you shan't, for you shall dine with me tonight. Happen what will afterwards. Oh, by the way, Mr. Rassendil, what name did they give you? Your Majesties. Well, that shows they weren't ashamed of us, eh? <laughs> well, come then, Cousin Rudolph. I've no house of my own here, but my dear brother Michael lends us one of his, and we'll make shift to entertain you there. <laughs> oh, funny. 
Deuce is funny. You tell a good story, sir. Uh, uh, fill your glass, cousin. No half measures. Remember tomorrow, sir. Let tomorrow remember itself. Now, here's a toast. I give you Cousin Rudolph. Cousin, cousin Rudolph. Rudolph. And another, the Elfberg Red. The Elfberg Red. <laughs> Joseph, another bottle. Yes, sir. Remember, you start two hours before I do, Master Fritz. You must be more sparing by two hours than I. Two hours? Uh, His Majesty means, Bressendil, that the Colonel and I leave here at six. We ride down to Zender and return with the Guard of Honor to fetch the King at eight. Hang that same guard. Oh, it is very civil of our brother Duke Michael to ask that honor for his regiment. Come, cousin, you need not start early. I'd better stay hid till you are gone, then I'll return across the frontier to Germany. Oh, I wish it had been a longer meeting. Joseph, fill Mr. Rassendil's glass. I've drunk enough, Joseph. Sire? I've drunk enough, Joseph, more than enough. There is yet another bottle, no. sir. His Highness the Duke of Strelza sent it, bidding me set this wine before the I king when the you. king was weary of all other wines. And pray the king to drink uh, for the love that he bears his brother. Oh, but what a bottle. <laughs> well done, Black Michael. Out with the cork, Joseph. Hang him, did he? Think I'd flinch from his bottle. Superb. Exquisite. Gentlemen, my friends, Rudolph, my cousin, everything is yours to the half of Ruritania, but ask me, ask me not for a single drop of this divine bottle, which I will drink to the health of that sly knave, my brother, Black Michael. Rassendil. Rassendil! Ah, oh, there's no, no waking the man, Fritz. We, we must try other means. <laughs> What the devil? You, your joke goes too far. That man, we've no time for quarreling. Nothing else would rouse you. It's five o'clock. Rustin, to look here. My God, the king. Can't you waken him? We've spent half an hour trying. Well, let me feel his pulse. We must get a doctor. But a thousand doctors wouldn't get him to Strelsau today. But the coronation. Aye. The coronation. The whole nation there to meet him. You must send word that he's ill. Ill! They know his illnesses too well. He's been ill before. Tell me, Rassendil, do you think the king was drugged? I do. And who drugged him, eh? Tell me that. That damned hound Black Michael. That he might not come to be crowned at all. Why, why, sooner or later, he'd be bound to find... Do you imagine Michael has no other king in mind? Half Strelsau has another candidate. Ah, A drunken dog. But he's an Elfberg, and the son of his father... And may I rot in hell before Black Michael sits in his place. There's yet one chance. As a man grows old, he believes in fate. Fate sent you here. Fate sends you now to Strelsau. My God, oh, God, God, God it's impossible. If the king cannot go to Strelsau today, then you must, Rassendil, and play his part for him. If one of you is not crowned by tonight, Michael will have roused his friends and had himself made king. It's a risk against a certainty. If you save, I'll wager you'll not be discovered. But, Colonel, I can't. Well, how can I? Are you afraid? Sir? Come, lad. There, there, there. But it's your life, you know, if you're discovered. I and mine and Fritz's here. If you don't go... I swear to you, Black Michael will sit tonight on the throne and the king lie in prison or his grave. But the king would never forgive him. Are we women? Who cares for his forgiveness? We'll lock him in the cellar for today and bring you back tonight when he's recovered. Well, will you go? Yes, I'll go. Bravo. Good. Yusuf! Yusuf! Your honor! Reserves, Yusuf! Hot water! So cold! Hurry, hurry! You shall help us to make a king this morning. Five minutes, lad, and we'll be in Strelsau. You know your part, all about the coronation procedure. As well as I may. Hmm. You won't be expected to know too much. The king is notoriously lax about such matters. What do you think Michael's escort did when they found us gone? Nothing. The king's in the cellar. And Joseph has a loyal heart and a ready tongue. He'll have told them that his majesty had a whim to go unescorted, and so rode with Fritz and myself to catch the train at Hofmar. Ah. There. Look from the window. 
Your capital, my liege. That fine spire is a cathedral where you're to be crowned. Your wrist, Rassendil. Let us feel how that pulse of yours goes. Hmm. A little too quick. Damn it all, man. I'm not made of stone. You'll do. That uniform fits as though it had been made for you. Uh, but an hour early. We'll send word forward of your majesty's arrival, for there'll be no one here to meet us yet. And meanwhile... Meanwhile, the king will be hanged if he doesn't have some breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> You're an Elfberg, every inch of you. God send we may be alive tonight. Amen. Strelsa! 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 Strelsa, gentlemen! Have you any bag? Don't stand and stare, man. But... But, 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 sir, it's, it's the king. Yes. Come sooner than we expected. His Majesty will take breakfast. Run and tell them. God save His Majesty. God save King Rudolf V. Not one of the excited crowd of onlookers and minor officials at the railway station had doubted that I was King Rudolf. And as I rode in state towards the cathedral through the newer part of the city, accompanied by sapped, Fritz von Thalenheim and a squadron of the cuirassier of the guard. The crowds cheered my passing. There he goes. Oh, he wears his uniform well. Let me see, Aunt. Oh, you're taking the whole window. He's the Elfberg color, and he's a good figure of a man. These stories they tell. They say he's had as many loves as hairs on his head. And what if he has? Time for that is over now. He's wedded to the state, poor fellow. God save the king. Hurrah! God save King Rudolph! God save the king! So much for new Strelsau, but when we were among the twisting, narrow streets of the old town, which was the heart and soul for Brother Michael, the reception was far from friendly. There he goes, that drunken fool. Where our duke should be riding. We need no red-headed woman eyes as in Ruritania. Duke Michael is a man. He belongs to us. We know him. He looks paler than usual. You'd look pale if you lived as he does. The pictures of him aren't handsome enough. Give me a man with some stuffing in him. Not a dressed-up rake. But the greatest ordeal was yet to come. In the cathedral... I would be face to face with two people who knew the king well. Duke Michael and Princess Flavia. His Majesty Rudolph V, King of Ruritania. God save your majesty. His Highness, Duke Michael of Strelsau. God save your majesty. Brother. Violet! 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 He carries it well, Fritz. He didn't yield an inch to Black Michael. The Duke looks as though he'd seen a ghost. And the Princess. Did you see her? When he kissed her on the cheek, she blushed like a rose. God, he's a lucky man. Or would be if he were fixed in the other's shoes. Follow his example, lad. Only the devil's impudence could carry us through. And he has it. Your Majesty looks somehow different today. Different, Cousin Flavia? More sober and sedate. You're almost careworn, and I declare you're thinner. Surely it's not possible that you've begun to take anything seriously. Would that please you, Flavia? You know my views. Whatever pleases you, I try to do. I assure you, my dear cousin, that nothing in my life has affected me more than my reception today. Did you notice Michael? 
Yes, he wasn't enjoying himself. Rudolph, I do implore you, you don't keep enough watch on him. You know... I know that he wants what I've got. And perhaps also something which I haven't yet got. But hope to have someday. Haven't you enough responsibilities on you for one day, cousin? Did you see her this morning in the cathedral? Never mind the woman. Are you ready to start? It's almost eight and dark outside. Sap, you're quite heartless. My dear good lad, you're quite damnably foolish. By twelve o'clock, you'll be no more than Rudolph Rassendil again. Indeed, you'll be lucky if you're not the late Rudolph Rassendil. Your brother, Michael, has had a message from Zender. He went into a room alone to read it and came out looking like a man dazed. I wonder what he's found out. Understand, Fritz. Rassendil and I ride to the hunting lodge. By dawn, I shall return with His Majesty. Meanwhile, no one is to pass this door. You know your story. The king has retired early. He is upset. No one is to see him until nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Hmm. If the door of this room is open while we're away, you'll not be alive to tell us about it. I need no schooling, Colonel. We must go, Rassendil. Wrap the cloak round you. Draw the cap down over your eyes. It must appear that my orderly rides with me tonight. I'm ready, Colonel. Goodbye, Fritz. Your hand, Rassendil. We may not meet again. Oh, damn your sentiment. Come along. We'll leave the horses here. The hunting lodge is a few yards to the left among the trees. Just as you like, Colonel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Damn you, keep quiet. Rattled, Colonel? Shh! Listen! Two horses. Not far away. Pull the horse into the brushwood. Put your cloak over the beast's head. This road goes on to the castle of Zender, though they may be bound for the lodge. Which way? The lodge? The Duke Michael. Shh. Could be a trap. Better ride straight on to the castle. We'll end there what really has happened. To Zender, then, get out. Aye, it was Michael, all right. The temptation to use my pistol was considerable. He's come out from Stolzau to discover what went wrong. What does he expect to hear, Zender? God knows. I only hope that Joseph has sense enough to... But come along, man. To the lodge. Let's see for ourselves. Ratzendil, the lodge door is open. And where's Josef? Damn Josef. Is the king safe? Yosef has the key of the cellar. Uh, the cellar's still locked, God be thanked. Yosef? Yosef? Yosef! There's something wrong. There's blood on the floor. Oh, my God. The king. The king. Give me a pistol. Quick, man. I'll blow in the lock. Now, keep clear. Let me strike a light. Who's that? Lying there by the wine bin. It's not the king. Turn him over. Good God. What? Who? It's, it's Joseph. His throat's cut from ear to ear. The king. My God, the king. The king is not here. Michael's escort can't have believed Joseph's story of the king's fancy to ride alone. They must have taken him to the castle at Zender. Do you realize that he may be murdered while we sit here? We must get back and rouse every soldier in Strelzow. That's no plan. Before we could force Zender, the king would be dead. You don't know Michael. Then what the devil? By Jove, we've shaken him, though. And we'll shake him more. Aye, lad, we'll go back to Strelzow. The king shall be in his capital again tomorrow. The king? Why? The crowned king. You're mad. Mad. If you play the man, you may save the king yet. Go back and keep his throne warm for him. But the Duke knows the villains he is employing. Aye, but they can't speak. We've got them there. This is not the king, because we kidnapped the king and murdered his servant. Can they say that? But I'm bound to be discovered. Perhaps, but every hour is something. Suppose they kill him. Then, by heavens, you're as good an Elfberg as Black Michael, and you shall reign in Ruritania. I'll try it. I knew you would. Come then to Strelzow. We shall be caught like rats in a trap if we stay here. But 
I'll not go before poor Joseph is buried. Yes, you will. Not I, Colonel Sapt. You fool. Look over there. By the edge of the wood. Four men on horseback and the rest walking. What are they carrying? Spades and mattocks. Michael has sent a party from Zender to remove the evidence. They'll save you the trouble of burying yourself. Colonel, we ought to strike a blow for him. Uh, you'd like to give him some company, eh? But it's too risky work, Your Majesty. I must have a slap at them. Surely you can see that. Well, I suppose if we come to grief, why, hang me, it'll save us a lot of thinking. Now then, raise him out! Revolver ready. No, steal for me. So be it. Now! You're hit. The bullet grazed my finger, that's all I think. Well, that was one to me. And two to you with any decent luck. Little Joseph will have company after all. I wonder if they noticed you. The big fellow did. As I stuck him, I heard him cry, the king. Good, good. Oh, we'll give Black Michael some work before we've done. And now, all speed for... Strothow! So it was that Sapt and I escaped from the hunting lodge with nothing but my wounded hand to pay for it. In accordance with the colonel's plan, I continued to play the king in Strelsau, where my deception remained undetected. Only Duke Michael and his party knew the truth, that there were two kings, and as Sapt had pointed out, they could not speak without revealing that it was they who had the real king in their keeping. Though they might try to kill me, they would never betray me publicly. We suspected that the king was prisoner in the castle of Zender guarded by half of Michael's notorious bodyguard, known in Ruritania as the Six. Of those six officers, all rogues and blackguards, half were foreigners, half Ruritanians. While the Ruritanians remained at Zender with their prisoner, the foreigners, a Belgian, a Frenchman, and a renegade Englishman, were in Strelsau itself, which meant that at any day, at any hour, I might get a shot in the back. But there was a lighter side. Though Sapt smiled and shook his head, I went on occasions to see my beloved cousin, the Princess Flavia. His Majesty the King, Colonel Sapt, Lieutenant von Tallenheim. Your Majesty. Is my cousin receiving, Countess? I will tell the Princess that Your Majesty is waiting. Thank you. Hmm. A good-looking girl, the Countess Helga. Hey, Fritz. Devilish good-looking. And you're a devilish poor actor, man. Is that where his heart lies? <laughs> Congratulations, Fritz. <laughs> We're wasting enough time on love affairs as it is. How's your hand? A trifle stiff, that's all. But it's useful as I can't write with it, and signatures might be difficult. Her Royal Highness will receive your Majesty. Thank you. Fritz and I will wait here for you. Good. You uh, won't be unwilling to keep us company, eh, Countess? Of course not. Hmm. I suppose I should take a turn in the picture gallery and leave you to your lovemaking. You are gaining golden laurels, Rudolph. You're like the prince in Shakespeare who was transformed by becoming a king. But I am forgetting you are king, sire. Perhaps I should not say such things. I ask you to speak nothing but what your heart tells you and call me nothing but my name. Then I'm glad and proud, Rudolph. Why, as I told you, even your face is changed? To have pleased you is my reward. But I have much to live down, whereas Brother Michael... I believe he is here in Strelsau, isn't he? Yes, he is here. And you're glad? I didn't say I was glad. Some people say so for you. They say that you favour... There are many insolent people. Possibly you mean that I am one. Oh, Your Majesty could not be, unless that is... Well, unless what? Unless you tell me that I mind a snap of my fingers where the Duke of Strelsau is. You don't care where Cousin Michael... I call him the Duke of Strelsau. You call him Michael when you meet him? By the orders of your father. We must all be pleasant to our dear Michael. Your Highness. Well, Helga? His Highness the Duke of Strelsau begs leave to present three of his gentlemen. Uh, tell the Duke that I am with His Majesty. He must wait. I will, madam. Are you wise to make him angry? How am I making him angry? By keeping him waiting. <laughs> How funny you are. 
He could not expect to be received while you were with me. An excellent etiquette, but I clean forgotten it. I never could remember all these silly rules. Let us have my dear brother in and see how he finds himself. Rudolph. Yes? Rudolph, be careful, won't you? Of what? You know I can't say, but think what your life is to... Well, to... To Ruritania. Only to Ruritania? To your friends, too. Friends? And to your cousin and loving servant. Thank you. And now for Michael. Come in, brother. If I had known you were here, you should not have waited a moment before I asked the princess to permit me to bring you to her. Your Majesty. Princess. Sire, may I present three friends of mine... De Gauté, Bessonin, and Dechar. They are the loyalist and most devoted of your majesty's servants. I am pleased to meet you, gentlemen. Your majesty. majesty. Oh, your hand is hurt, sire. How did that happen? I was playing a game with a mongrel dog. And such, you know, brother, have uncertain tempers. But there is danger from the bite, Rudolph. None from that, cousin. If I gave him a chance to bite deeper, it would be different. But surely he has been destroyed. <laughs> Not yet. We're waiting to see if his bite be harmful. And if it is, he'll be knocked on the head, brother. He might bite again. Doubtless he'll try. Here's a letter for you, sire. A woman's hand, I think. Thank you. But I have some news for you first. Well... The king is at the castle of Zender. Well, how do you know? Because the other half of Michael's six are there. Lahngram, Krafstein, and young Rupert Hensar. Three rogues. And the greatest of these is Hensar. I'll go to Zender. You're mad. Someday. Ah. <laughs> Perhaps. You'll very likely stay there for good if you do. That may be, my friend. What is in the letter, sire? Listen to this. If the king desires to know what it deeply concerns the king to know, let him do as the letter bids him. At the end of the new avenue, there stands a house in large grounds. A wall encloses the garden. There is a gate in the wall at the back. At twelve o'clock tonight, if the king enters alone by that gate, turns to the right and walks twenty paces, he will find a summer house approached by a flight of eight steps. If he mounts and enters, he will find someone who will tell him what touches most dearly his life and his throne. He must be alone. If he neglects the invitation, his life will be in danger. Let, Let him show this to no, no one. Or, or he, he will ruin a woman who loves him. Black Michael does not pardon. No, but he can dictate a very pretty letter. Wait a moment. If you hesitate, consult Colonel Sapp. The devil. Does she take me for a greater fool than you? Ask him what woman would do most to prevent the Duke from marrying his cousin and therefore most to prevent him becoming king. And ask if her name begins with A... Antoinette de Maubon, by heaven. Michael wrote it, though. Perhaps. But I mean to know for certain. I shall go, Sapt. Don't be a fool, man. She's Michael's creature. She came with you on the train. She knows the whole story better even than he. Sapt, I believe in that woman, and I shall go. I don't believe in any woman, and you shan't go. I go either to the summer house or back to England. We are playing against time. Sapt, we must play high. We must force the game. So be it. I'll go to this summer house at midnight. Who's there? Ah, shut the door quickly. Uh, madame. Oh, don't I... talk. We've no time. Listen, I know you're Monsieur Rassendil. I wrote that letter at the Duke's orders. So I thought. In a few moments, three men will be here to kill you. When you're killed, your body will be taken to a low quarter of the town and left lying there. It will be found... Michael will arrest all your friends and proclaim a state of siege in Strelzow. A messenger will go to Zender, and the other three are at the castle will murder the king. A pretty plot. But why, madame, do you? I love Michael of Strelzow. Do you understand? He is ambitious. He wishes to marry the princess. I would risk even this to make certain that he never belongs to her. Listen, Monsieur Rassendil. Never by night or day are you safe. Always the three follow you. Your life is not worth a moment if they find you alone. Remember that. And for God's sake, take care. 
Now go. Past the summer house, a hundred yards along the wall, you will find a ladder. Get over and fly for your life. And you? Please go at once. Au revoir, then, madame. You have served the king well tonight. Where is he in the castle? Across the drawbridge, you come to a heavy door. Beyond that lies... Hark, what's this? They're coming. They're too soon. They seem to me to be in the nick of time. Put your pistol back. You may perhaps kill one of them. But what then? One would be something. Mr. Rassendale. Shh. We want to talk to you. Are you promised not to shoot till we've done? Have I the pleasure of addressing Captain Detchar? Never mind names. Then let mine alone. All right, sire. I have an offer for you. Let's hear it then, Detchar. A safe conduct to the frontier. And 50,000 pounds English. No, no, they are treacherous. 50,000, eh? That seems handsome. Give me a moment to consider, huh? What are you going to do? Stand close to the wall, out of line of fire from the door. And you? Just behind me is a little iron tea table. It will make a most adequate shield and battering ram when the moment comes. There. Now keep it back. Gentlemen, I accept your offer. If you will open the door. Open it yourself. <laughs> I can't open it. The latch is caught. And then I'll open it. Take care. Nonsense, Burson, and why not? Are you afraid of one man? There. <coughs> stand back and look out! <coughs> Damn him! We shall meet again, madame. He's got over the wall. How do you tell this to Michael? Take your eyes from the man for a moment and listen. Michael and the three have left the castle at center. After their failure at the summer house, they may have gone to murder the king. I thought I might at least have hit one of them. Detchard has his arm in a sling. Good. Antoinette de Maubon has left for Dresden, but that's nothing. For the German express stops at Zender. It's ten to one she'll like to and join her lord and master. Then in God's name, Sapt, why are we wasting our time at this dance? We should be after them. Patience. This ball was arranged for a reason. The state of feeling in the city is not satisfactory. The people of all parties love the princess. The king is much criticized for taking no steps about his marriage. I cause the announcement that his majesty gives a ball tonight in honor of the princess to be widely known. The effect is good. Well, not now. You must follow it up. You better propose to her tonight. What? Oh, uh, at any rate, go and hear it. Well, that'll be something to give to the papers and keep the gossips quiet. Damn your cold-blooded intrigues. I utterly refuse to take part in making a fool of the princess. All right, lad. All right. We mustn't bless you too hard. Just be nice to her. We'll soothe her down a bit. What do you know? Ah. The dance is over. Now is your chance. You promised the next to her highness. I'm for a stroll in the garden. But sat. Sat. Oh, my God. Thank you, Marshal. Such a dance for an old man. <laughs> it's too great an honor, madame. Good evening, Marshal Strachan. Oh, young, good evening, Your Majesty. Thank you, Marshal. Mm -hmm. The next waltz is ours, Rudolph. Could I forget that, Flavia? Well, shall we not dance, but sit out on the terrace where it's cool? But of course. Is anything wrong, Rudolph? Wrong? I... You seem so thoughtful. Thoughtful, yes. The cares of state? More personal problems, Flavia. Your counsellors worry you. They forget you've been away so long from Ruritania that such great responsibility is new and strange. You mean because a waster has come home to be king? Oh, you are unkind. Such a thought never came into my head. In everything, I am your majesty's loving servant. My loving servant, Flavia. If I were not Rudolph V, but just... A, a private gentleman. Oh, oh, don't we all indulge in such dreaming? We aren't so taken with our rank and dignity, are we, that we never think, oh, oh, if only. What do you mean? How can I tell you? You must. That if you were just a private gentleman. Yes? I should still be your loving servant. Flavia, my darling. And I yours. I... Is it true? Yes. Or is it 
Only because you must say this. It's true. True that I love you. I love you more than life or truth or honor. I could show you how I love you. How is it that I love you now, Rudolph? Now? Not before I came to be crowned? No. Never before. You must be careful, Rudolph. Michael will be more desperate than ever now. Michael? Oh, if Michael were the worst. What worse is there? You frighten me. If I were not the king, if I were... Darling, there's something I must tell you. Flavia, I'm not what you think. I am not... Rise. <coughs> Colonel Sapt. A thousand pardons, sire. But his eminence, the cardinal, has waited this quarter of an hour to offer his respectful adieus to your majesty. We must not keep his eminence waiting. Colonel Sapt, you will watch over his majesty night and day to see that he meets with no harm. In joy or sorrow, in good times or bad, God save your royal highness. But before all comes the king. God save the king. Amen. Amen. I go to Zender tonight, nor you nor the devil shall stop me, Sapt. I realize that. So I've arranged for us to stay at the Tarlenheim Chateau. It belongs to Fritz's uncle, a loyal gentleman, who gladly lends it to us. The chateau is within a short ride of Michael's castle at Zender. It will serve as our headquarters. Tell me, sire, why is it that today you're so anxious to leave Strelzow, whereas last night, when I found you at the ball with the princess... Last night, I nearly told her everything, Sapt. I can't deceive her. I love her far too much for that. That's why I'm going tonight. She'll love you whether you're king or commoner. That should be enough. One day he'll be back in his place, and what then? Let tomorrow take care of itself. You're so deuced pleased that she loves you for yourself alone. And isn't that something, damn you? Uh, it's a difficult business. You're better away from here. The news is known. His Majesty goes hunting for a few days. What have you told her? That I go hunting, and that the quarry is Michael. What? I had to tell her some of the truth. She dislikes Michael enough not to demand to know more. As it is, she trusts me, but is afraid for me. My dear venture, she is. Sapt, don't you understand that when you love a woman, such a trick as this I, is... I do, lad. But you'll win through someday. Somehow. Though I say it, you are the finest elf bow of them all. That night, Colonel Sapt, Fritz, and I, with ten officers from the cuirassier of the guard, rode out to Zender, where Fritz's uncle, old Count Tallenheim, had lent us his country house, which stood across the valley within full view of Black Michael's castle and the evil, crumbling keep, which could only be reached by a drawbridge. We went on pretext of boar hunting, though our true plan was to keep a close watch on the castle and see how best to effect the rescue of the king from the keep. Our first move was to find out what was going on at the castle. Recalling my first night in Ruritania and the love affair between Rosa, daughter of old Mother Holf of the Golden Lion, and Johann, the Duke's huntsman, we made a plan to capture Johann when he came down from the castle for an evening's flirtation. However, we were interrupted in our deliberations when one of the servants knocked at the door. Your Majesty, Captain Rupert Hensow has come from the castle for a private word with His Majesty. The deuce he has. Let me have a private word with the young devil. Now take care, Sapt. Of all the handsome, reckless, treacherous sons of Satan... Leave us alone together. I may learn something. As you will. But I'll be close at hand. Captain Hensow, sir. Good morning, sire. I trust Your Majesty is in good health. In excellent health, sir. Nerves strong. Nerves stronger. <laughs> Look here, Rassendil. Captain Hensar, if you do not know how to address the king, my brother must find another messenger. Oh, must we keep up this far? Yes, as it is not finished yet. And meanwhile, I'll choose my own name. What's your message? The Duke offers you more than I would. A halter for you, sire, was my suggestion. But he offers you safe conduct across the frontier and a million crimes. I prefer your offer if I'm bound to one. You refuse? Of course. I told Michael you would. <laughs> Michael doesn't understand a gentleman. <laughs> and you? Oh, I do. Well, well. The halter be it. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm sorry you won't live to see it. Ah, has His Majesty done me the honour to fasten a particular quarrel on me? His Majesty has. Tell me, how is your prisoner? The King? I said your prisoner. I forgot your wishes, sir. Well, he's alive. And the pretty princess? Faith, I wager the next elf bag will be red enough for all that Black Michael will be called his father. You, you insolent young swine, go while your skin is still whole. <laughs> Rassendil, I admire your spirit. You refuse to listen to my master's proposal? Hear one from me. Attack the castle boldly. Let Sapt and Tarlenheim lead. You inspire me with confidence, my lord. Arrange the time with me. Sapt and Fritz will fall. Black Michael will fall. We'll see to that. Go on. He'll fall like the dog he is. The prisoner, as you call him, will go the way Michael has arranged for him. Two men will be left. I, Rupert Hetzau, and you, <laughs> King of Ruritania. Isn't that a hand to play? A throne and your princess... And for me, say, a competence and your majesty's gratitude. Surely, while you're above ground, hell lacks its master. Get out of my reach, Hensa, or I... <laughs> so you refuse that, too. Oh, you're in a difficult mood, Rast... Your majesty. Oh, I'll go, never fear, but... Before I go, let us shake hands. <laughs> me. Hensel has... I lay unconscious for many hours. When I awoke, Fritz told me Hensel had escaped, but that Johann the Keeper had fallen into the snare we had set for him. Go on, Johann, and speak plainly. Be brief, for Mr. Rassendil is indisposed. This is not overtiring you, Rassendil. No. I won't have you acting nursemaid to me, Sap. If hence I had not been in such a hurry, I'd have been acting undertaker. Hmm. Go on, Johan. Don't be afraid. No one will hurt you. I promise, sire, that you won't let them know. Go that. on. We'll not betray you. Oh, in the old keep, there are two rooms just beyond the drawbridge. The staircase leads down to them, for they are below ground, cut out of the rock. In the first room, three of Duke Michael's six gentlemen are always on guard. The orders are that if there's any chance of the bridge being forced, one of them shall leave the two others to hold the door while he goes into the inner room and uh, kills the king. So that's where he is. Is he well? Aye, he's well enough. Though they have his arms fastened with fine steel chains. Alive or dead, he's evidence against them. Duke Michael's thought of that. While the two hold the outer door, the one who's killed the king unlocks the bars of the window. The window gives no light. It's blocked by the end of a great earthenware pipe which leads down to the moat, coming to an end immediately below the surface of the water. God. The king being dead, the murderer ties a heavy weight to his body, raises it by a pulley, Captain Detchard has provided that, mm. till it's level with the mouth of the pipe. Then he inserts the feet in the mouth of the pipe and pushes the body down. Mm. This rules out direct attack. Yeah. Once they know we're coming, they'll kill him and take their chance. We must think of a plan for spiriting him away before they have time to do anything. In the meantime, Fritz, take your arm away and have him closely guarded. No, no good, no. If the fellow is missing, they'll smell a rat and may kill the king out of panic. No, he must go back. Now, do you hear that, Johan? Yes, sir. We'll trust you to go back to the castle and keep your mouth shut. Sir. You'd be wise to keep it so, my friend. If ever this gentlemanly little murder is committed... There'll as like as not be a journey down the pipe for some of the witnesses. Our plan was laid. Fritz and I would swim the moat separating Black Michael's castle from the island fortress in which the king was imprisoned and take a look at the pipe. But even the most carefully laid plan can be endangered by the unexpected. That night I received a visit from someone who was no longer a stranger to me. Rudolph, you gave us a sad fright at Strelsau. It was difficult to get news. All we could learn was that you had been hurt in a shooting accident. I, I had to come at once. It wasn't a very serious accident, my dearest. Why, I'm almost fit again. Oh, but why wouldn't you let the court surgeon come out here to you? Why must this be kept so secret? I'm beginning to believe that you don't care enough for your life, Rudolph, nor for me. Look into my eyes, my princess, and tell me you still believe that. Oh, Rudolph. 
It's late. You must go to bed. You must be tired after your journey. I see. Anxious to be rid of me. Of course not. I am still not very strong. That's all. I'm sorry. I should have thought. Uh, till tomorrow. Till tomorrow, Flavia. And you promised, Rudolph, to take care of yourself. Your Majesty's health is a very deep concern to his loyal subject. I promise. Sapped. Sir. Are the horses ready? Aye. But you'd better not go to the castle tonight. You're scarcely out of bed yet. And certainly in no shape for swimming. I'm going, and I'm going tonight. <sighs> what is devilish cold in a bathing party? I wish you'd stayed with Sapped on the bank, Fritz. Damn. What is it? Boat. Right by the pipe. Someone's in it. Sentry. Come on. He must be disposed of. He's asleep. If he wakes up, he'll see us on the ledge by the pipe. I hate the idea of wrestling him in cold blood. But I've got to put him out of the way. We must. It's war and the king's life at stake. When I give the word... Now! A dirty business. But we can't afford to be spotted now. We'll drag the boat under the wall. Now, here's the pipe, and that must be the king's cell. There seem to be rejoicings on shore. Can you get onto the ledge? I'll try. <laughs> That's all right. Now, give me your hand. Have you had enough of my society? I will leave you to rest. The king's cell. I must fasten the little ornaments first. Have you anything to ask, sire, before we part? Captain Detchon. Pray my brother to kill me. I am dying by inches. The Duke does not desire your death, sire. Yet, when he does, behold your path to heaven, the pipe which leads to glory and the grave. I can expect no mercy from you. If your orders allow you, pray lead me. May you dream of paradise, sire. Did you hear that? I heard. Did we speak to the king? Too dangerous. <laughs> There's someone crossing the drawbridge. Detchard, now keep close to the wall. He's looking this way. Sentry! Where the devil are you, man? Sentry! Henso! Hello, Henso! What is it, Detchard? Henso. Yes. Is that you, Henso? Well, there's something wrong here. No sentry in the boat stall. The devil in hats! Grant my horse! Damn! I'd hoped for better luck. You there, Detchard? Where are you, man? It's still as dark as the night. Here I am! There's no answer from Max. I shouted to him and the boats disappeared too. You don't think... No, it's not possible. Sap and his men are all in bed at Tallenheim. We better look, though. Hi! Crash time! Man, Grant, turn out the guard! Hey. Over the drawbridge and find out what the deuce has happened to that sentry! Come on, Deschard. Start over the back so that we can get a view from the moat. The devil is dark! We must get the body back to the bank. Right now, carefully. That's it. Now, whistle for Sapt. That's Sapt and the others firing at Hensel. Come on, Fritz. Right. Stop there. Hello, Rassendil. <laughs> well, play actor. And what are you up to? Why, you're all wet. You don't say they pushed you into the moat. Get off your horse and fight like a man. The odds are too considerable. We'll meet again, play actor. Till then, adieu. Rastil, where are you? Here, Fritz, here. Oh, it's escaped. God, if I don't a pistol. Never fear. Rupert Hensow and I will meet again. There's nothing more we can do here. Come, let's find Sapt and head for home. We did not expect to see you again so soon, Johan. What made you decide to risk calling on us? I bring a note for you, sir, from Madame de Maubon. From Antoinette? And the king? How is he? They have not harmed him after last night's encounter with Michael's men. Not yet. But if you do not free the king at once, he is a dead man. His health is failing. They've had a doctor out from Stolzow. Aye. Aye, we know that. 
I had hoped it was for that black-hearted young devil, Hensow. He was not touched in the fight last night. He swears a great deal against Mr. Rassendil and guards the king even closer. And that is when he's not in Madame de Maubourg's apartments. So? So he has his eye on Michael's lady. Listen to this, Sapt. Johan carries this for me. Remember, I tried to help you once. In the name of God, and if you are a man, help me now. Rescue me from this den of murderers. Tell me, Johan, where does Madame de Maubon sleep? Her apartments are in the new part of the castle. Uh-huh. And the Duke's? Immediately opposite hers. And the king is imprisoned on the island connected by a drawbridge to the castle. How is his majesty guarded now? Nature and Burson in by day. Gote and Hensa by night. They sit in the outer room. The other two are in the guardroom above, ready at the sound of a shout or a whistle. And where do you sleep? In the entrance hall of the castle. Good. Pen and paper, please, Sapt. Here. Now, Johan, you must get back there. I'd rather stay here. Afraid? Yes, afraid. Would 50,000 crowns overcome your tremors? 50,000 crowns? All you need to do to earn them is this. Exactly at 2 o'clock tomorrow morning, fling open the front door of the castle. Should you be there, sir? Ask no questions. Do what I tell you. And, uh... May I escape, sir, by the door when I have opened it? Yes, as quick as your legs will carry you. Oh, and one thing more. Take this note to Madame de Maupin. It's in French, so it's no use your trying to read it. And charge her for the sake of all our lives not to fail in what it orders. Yes, sir. Good uh, good night, gentlemen. What's the plan? Fritz and I will repeat our swimming expedition of last night. You, Sapt... And all our men from here will wait by the main door of the castle until Johan opens it. Then rush the servants. I've told Antoinette that when she hears you in the hall below, she is to let out a cry for help, coupled with the name of Rupert Hensow. That should bring Michael out of his rooms, and you'll be able to tackle him. Mm. I'm hoping that on hearing the noise, Detchard, at least, who is loyal to Michael, will be for getting across from the island to his rescue. To do that, he must lower the drawbridge. Well done! Once the bridge is down, it's up to you to hold it. Fritz and I will be at the island to watch over the king and deal with anyone who tries to raise the bridge again. We'll need the devil's luck. And if we fail... We must not fail. It was a risk that we were taking, but we had to strike now, before Michael had time to act. Perhaps I might die. Perhaps I might succeed. And by succeeding, lose the woman who was growing to mean more and more to me. As Flavia had insisted on staying near me in the chateau, I went to see her. Come in. Oh, Your Majesty. I wish a word with the princess, Countess Helga. She is about to retire. Only to bid her good night. I will tell her, Your Majesty. It is the king, madam. Rudolf. So late. Flavia, I had to come. Oh, my dear. They're keeping me late at work, papers of state. I'm glad you've come. I've been worrying about you. I have something for you. For me? Yes. This ring, Rudolph, to keep you safe. It's very simple, my darling, and they'll make me give you a more splendid one when we are betrothed, but till then... I want no other. This ring will hold me to you forever. But you must have one from me. I have none but this gold signet. Will you wear that? Uh, This motto, Neil why, fakey. Where did you get that? It came from England, I believe. It is the motto of an English family. Promise me that you will wear that ring even though you wear another when you are queen. Whatever else I wear, this I will wear till I die. And after. Good night. Good night, Rudolph. Until tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes. Yes. What's the time, Fritz? Close on one o'clock. An hour yet before Johan opens the door and we swim the moat. It's devilish cold here. Devilish. This may be the last word I have with you, Fritz. (laughs) By tomorrow morning, I must either be dead or across the frontier. For my part, Rassendil, it's harder to say which alternatives are more damnable. Thank you, Fritz. I'm so terribly sorry, the princess. I came into this affair with my eyes open. But this complication, we none of us foresaw it. I wouldn't willingly have missed it, my friend. To have known the finest lady in the world... To have been loved by her. And she... Shh. There's a light over the other side of the castle. It's in Madame de Maupon's room. She's opening her window. <laughs> Who's that laughing? She's not alone. There's someone behind her in the window. It's Enzo. <laughs> What's he saying? I wish I knew. 
I'd rather throw myself out of this window. A little melodramatic, don't you think? Come, Antoinette. What the devil do you see in Michael? If I told him what you say, Count Rupert... No, don't I'd... move away. Come here. <laughs> That's better. You know Michael is mad about the princess. He talks of nothing but cutting the play actor's throat and having her for himself. <laughs> and if I do it for him, what do you think he's promised me? Hmm? <laughs> but there, I detest waiting. And so, in the meantime, Antoinette, a few kisses on a card. Michael! What are you doing here? Apologizing for your absence, sir. I've warned you before, my friend. Guard your insolence or the moat may hold more than the king. Does your highness threaten me? A threat is more warning than most men get from me. Rudolf Rassendil has been much threatened and yet lives. Am I in fault because my servants bungled? Your Highness has run no risk of bungling. Enough. It's foolish to quarrel, Rupert. <laughs> are Detchard and Burson in at their post? They are, sir. Well, it's time, surely, that you were in bed. In a moment, the drawbridge will be up, and I presume you have no wish to swim to your bed? None at all, sire. Good night, Antoinette. Look, Fritz. There goes Rupert across the drawbridge on his way back to the island. Mm. Keep quiet. He mustn't suspect anything. Hey, Goethe, unless you want to bark before your bed, come on. What's the time? Four past one. Better hurry, or they'll be taking the bridge up. Bring the bottle with you. Hello? Hello? Thank you, Preston. The wet drawbridge, Hepsar. We're taking her up. A moment, man. Come on, De Goethe. Back to our bachelor quarters. There goes the bridge, and that's that. Oh, we have another hour to wait. Let's have a go at your flask. Supposing Johan does not keep his word. Supposing a thousand accidents happen. Come on, Fritz, the flask. One drink before we swim the moat. Here's the pipe. Bye. Water seemed even colder tonight than before. <laughs> Anything left in the flask? Shh. There's someone about. Can you see him? In a moment, when he gets into the moon. It's Rupert. Well? In his shirt sleeve with the drawn sword. What in heaven's name is he out? <laughs> He's swimming across. The devil he is. It seems there are other plots than ours afoot tonight. Did he reach the bank yet? Yes. Yes, he's pulling himself out of the water. Is it time? Almost. We'll make a move soon, over to the steps by the drawbridge. Any sign of him, sir? No. He seems to have gone into the castle. Right. Now, quietly, we don't want to alarm them, or they might... Shh! <laughs> Antoinette! The light's gone out in her room! Did you tell her two o'clock? She's ten minutes at least too soon. Don't you see, ma'am? This is genuine. Hensar really has gone into her room. That's why he swam across. If only Sapt and his men are ready. Now, come on! Come on! Over there! In the shadow! Anyone who tries to cross the drawbridge can reckon with us. Right, right. Well, Michael, this is your day of reckoning. Oh, help! <laughs> Michael, God, help, stay. help, What's help, the That's uh, I'll kill you for this! I did not think you cared so deeply about what happened to the lady. Or is it merely pride of possession? My lord, what is it? Ah, the faithful Johan. Excuse me, my lord. Get help, Johan. Help! I think not. Help! Help. Black Michael. Duke of Strelsau. Help. Your... Help. Highness! Help! <laughs> He's killed him. The Duke is dead. This, I think, is where I take my leave. Look, Bessinger. Madame de Bourbon's room. Rupert's in the window. He's jumping. What the devil's all this row? Who's fighting? The Gauthier. Let him lower the drawbridge and then attack. No! no! <laughs> now go on, search him. The keys. See if he's got the keys to the king's cell. 
damnation. Listen, they charge and burst and then they're coming. Behind this door. Devil can it be? We'd better kill the king and have done with it. No, wait. There'll be trouble we strike too soon. See what the goatee says. Now, Fritz, now. Rashida, get inside, Deshaun. Kill the king, kill the king. I'll hold them off. Will you, my friend? You're too late, Rashida. You'll find nothing to leave him to me. Oh, Rashida. Then there's something more I owe you, Bernard. In there. Fritz. Fritz, are you badly hurt? I'm too bad. Only my shoulder. The king! Oh, cover my back if you can. Make sure no one crosses the drawbridge. They charge in with the king. I'll do my best. They charge. <laughs> it's cousin Rudolph. Come on. I'll help you, cousin. At last, Rassendil. At last, my dear fellow countrymen, renegade Englishman, keep away from the king. <laughs> Than you, my friend. Now, where shall I make the first hit? It is a matter of unconcern. Ah, a hit! Damnation. Now, both of you are to go down the pipe. The king first, I think. Uh, come on, sire. Join in the fun. Drive that chair against his legs. <laughs> my God, Deschard, if you turn your sword on him. <laughs> God, you killed him. One Elfberg the less. And one English renegade. <laughs> Your Majesty, answer me. Oh, don't say he's dead. Head down. He's crossing the drawbridge. You'll be here in a second. In here, Fritz. See to the king. He's hurt. Leave me to deal with him, sir. Take care, isn't it? Rudolph. You're hurt too. Badly, maybe. But I have a debt to settle with the last of the famous six. Stay with the king. Well, Rupert Hensel. Why, it's the play actor. How came you here, man? I had the pleasure of killing three of your friends. What? You got to the king's cell? Yes. And the king? Heard by Deschard, but I pray that he lives. You fool. How about our princess, if he does? I'll thank you not, not to make use of her name. If Deschard had not wounded me, you would not be alive now, Rupert. Let me tell you, Rassendil, before I kill you, that I shall be devilish sorry to do so. You have qualities that I admire. Damn your impertinence. <coughs> You've dropped your sword. Then now's your chance. The dulcet tones of Colonel Sapt. Help! Sapt! Rupert Hensel! But first you, I think, play at the... Missed him! Damnation! Oh, that was poor shooting, Fritz. I'm sorry that I can't stay to give you a lesson, but the odds are becoming too great. Good night, Fritz, and... Uh, God bless you. Remember me to Sapt. Au revoir. Rudolf Rassendil. 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 Why the devil doesn't he answer? Rassendil. Fritz. Oh, I see Sappy speaking. Oh, thank God. Fritz. My dear friend. Dear friend. Is the king alive? Thanks to the most gallant gentleman in the world, the king is alive. Thank God. Sapt, I... Where am I? In the thicket beside the avenue. We brought you over from the castle in case... In case what? Well, oh, damnation, lad. It's hard to put words to it. You mean in case anyone should see me? Well, my game is played. And there is only one king in Zepta. And I must... I would it were otherwise. Is this a carriage? They've seen us, whoever they are. Go forward, Fritz, and head them back. Count von Tallenheim. 
What are you doing here? They, they told me that the king lay wounded at the castle. So he does. Is his wound grave? Not so grave that it will not soon be healed, madame. But why are you not attending on him? We are here on other business. Who we... is that behind you? Uh, will you let me pass? Heavens, it is the king. Oh, Rotoff, are you badly hurt? Tell me, gentlemen, wherein lay the witch of the joke that you played on me. Oh, oh my darling. Madam, it is not the king. He is the king. It is the king's face, the king's ring, my ring. It is my love. Your love, madam, but not the king. The king is there in the castle. This gentleman here... Look at me, Rudolph. Look at me. Why do you let them torment me? Tell me what it means. God forgive me, madam. I am not the king. Excuse me, Your Majesty. You must not stay long, Resinil. The doctors forbid. Well, cousin Rudolph. Here is your ring, sire. I have tried not to dishonor it. Let me go. My work here is done. Yes, it is done. As no man but you could have done it. Cousin, you have shown me how to play the king. Sire. I can take no praise from you. It is by the narrowest grace of God that I was not a worse traitor than your brother. I don't understand you. Your Majesty is tired. It would be better... Yes. Farewell, Cousin Rudolph. And God protect you. Sap, time must be gone today. Yes. By the first train across the frontier. It goes at eight in two hours. But are you fit to travel? I can't stay here. I can't see her. But you must. She has asked to see you before you leave us. You can't play the coward over that. Flavia. Oh, you mustn't bow to me. You hurt. Sit down here. Oh, how hot your head is. I came to beg your forgiveness for my presumption. But now... Oh, I love you with all my heart and soul. Oh, Rudolph, my darling. With all my life and soul, always. From the first moment I saw you in the cathedral three months ago, only three months, summer turned to autumn. God forgive me the wrong I've done you. They made you do it. I meant to tell you I was going to on the night of the ball in Strelsau when Sapt interrupted me. After that, I couldn't risk losing you before I must. Oh, what are we to do now, Rudolph? Flavia, I'm going away today. Oh, no. No, not today. I must, before more people have seen me. Oh, if I could come with you. My God, don't talk about that. Why not? I love you. That's all that matters. If it were only possible, but think, Flavia, is love the only thing that matters? If love were the only thing, I'd follow you in rags, if need be, to the world's end. For you hold my heart in the hollow of your hand. But you are right to ask, is love the only thing? I know people write and talk as if it were, but if love had been the only thing, you would have let the king die in his cell. <laughs> I must have been mad. I love your madness. But you're right. Honor binds a woman to Rudolph. My honor lies in being true to my country and my family. I don't know why God has let me love you. But I do know that I must stay. Your ring will be always on my finger. Your heart in my heart. The touch of your lips on mine. But you must go and I must stay. Perhaps I must do what it kills me to think of doing. Do what you will. Or what you must. I think God shows his purposes to such as you. May he comfort you, my darling. Rudolph. 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 Keep your face well covered, Rassendil. <laughs> Cautious to the last, eh, Sap? Don't look so gloomy, Fritz. We're all but half men this morning. But we have been men, eh, Sapton Fritz, old friends? 
We have run a good course between us. We have defeated traitors and set the king firm on his throne. Heaven doesn't always make the right men, King. The devil has his share in most things. Goodbye, Sap. Goodbye, Fritz. Before God, you are the finest Elfberg of them all. And so I returned to England, where the ordinary ambitions and aims of men seemed to me dull and unattractive. And yet I thanked God that I loved the noblest lady in the world, the most gracious and beautiful, and that there had been nothing in my love that had made her fall short of her high duty. I thought, shall I see her face again, the pale face with the glorious hair? Shall I hold sweet converse with her, or know from her her love. For three years, fate gave me no hint, my heart no presentiment, although every year I went to Dresden to meet my dear friend and companion, Fritz, who carried with him a little box from his queen. For my darling had married the king, as she knew she must, and in the box lies a red rose, and round the stalk is a slip of paper with the words written, Rudolph, Flavia, always. And I the like send back by him. We talk of Sapt, of the king, of young Rupert Hentzow, and when his name comes into my head, I feel my hand grip and the blood move quicker through my veins, and the hint of fate seems to grow stronger and more definite, and to whisper persistently that I have yet a hand to play with young Rupert. And what a hand it has been. A hand which has led to my... Uh, but I must rest a while. Until time allows me to tell you of my third visit to Dresden to meet Fritz and to hear of my darling and how I was again brought face to face with Rupert of Hensau. In The Prisoner of Zender by Anthony Hope, adapted for radio by Eric Mashwitz and Kay Patrick, Rudolf Rassendil and King Rudolf were played by Julian Glover. Princess Flavia, Hannah Gordon, Colonel Sapp, Nigel Stock, Fritz, David Timpson, Rupert of Hensau, Martin Jarvis, Duke Michael, Michael Spice, Antoinette and Kid. Lord Bellston, Clive Swift, Lady Bellaston and Frau Hoff, Diana Bishop, Countess Helga, Hilda Schroeder, Rosa, Cherry Gilliam, Daychard, Terry Scully, Johann, Sam Dastor, Joseph, Hayden Jones, De Gote, William Slay, Bersonin, David Goodison, and the Customs Officer by Brian Haynes. The play was produced by Martin Jenkins. You can hear the sequel to The Prisoner of Zender 
Rupert of Hentzau, in which Rudolf Rassendil returns to Ruritania for more adventure and romance, on Thursday afternoon, at the same time, two o'clock.